Aha. We have success. Just going to give it a little while for anyone else who wants to join. Hello. Just waiting for others. Give it about another minute and we'll get cracking. Almost there. All right, I'm guessing that's as uh, good as it's going to get. So, hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you happen to be in the world. Uh, it is about 11 a.m. here at the moment, and uh, I thought we'd get... A little bit of a painting session in uh, on the bird of prey wings uh, that the premium subscribers have been waiting so patiently for. So as you can see, I've done a just a rough post shading on these, and I'm using a very complex system of toothpicks to block up the uh, light systems there, so we don't uh, spray the SMDs. Very very simple process. Uh, just tape down the wiring for the SMDs that are in there, just to make sure I don't get any paint on the ends and it doesn't mess up the paintwork. That section there itself will be covered uh, on the end product, so it really doesn't need to be painted all that well. But uh, yeah, we'll give it a go and uh, see how we start. If you have any questions, feel free to ask whether it's about this or about anything else. Not a problem. Uh, right. So I'm just going to start off with the paint. I've put about two mil of uh, Tamiya, was it X20? You know, in there, X20A, sorry, in there. And uh, we're going to mix some NATO green of the Tamiya paint as well into that. And that's just going to be our base coat. So I've already pre-stirred that. Um, now, the reason why I'm going for this color for a base coat is I actually quite like the green. I mean, a lot of people will look at it and go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've seen that on um, German vehicles or aircraft, whatever. Uh, but it's a decent mid-tone base to start off with the color. So if we apply that as our mid, I can make it a bit warmer by adding the Tamiya yellow, or I can make it a bit cooler by adding Tamiya white. Um, and I can do you know various shades quite easily with this. Whereas if I started it like a really, really dark green or a really, really light green, um, then I've got less of the spectrum to play with. I can only go you know sort of one way, but uh, this way it's all right. So we're just going to add as much as this. Now this jar, this particular jar is pretty old. So the paint's a little thick in this one, but uh, we'll just see how it goes. I've got plenty of others there if I need to uh, Swap it out, that's not a problem. We'll just give this a quick mix. Now I want a very thin mix on this. So it's probably approximately two thirds thinner to uh, one third paint. I don't want wood chips in there from broken toothpicks. So let's start again, get another one out. There we go. So you can see if I drag that up the side there, it really doesn't want to uh, stay, it just wants to run back down again, which is fine. That's what we want, because we're going to start off 
very very thin just so we don't erase all the uh, pre-shading detail that we've done all right so let's just tip this in here hey, nothing too spectacular very very simple and of course before we spray we want to make sure that our mix is right so you're going to hear my compressor kick on from time to time i'm sorry that's pretty much unavoidable now that's not too bad let's just flip this over so you can see the sort of stream that's coming out so it really is quite thin uh, and that's what we're after now I found with this airbrush with the nozzle on the end, that's there to help the airflow, but it's also there to protect the needle. And uh, I really find that if I am spraying with this on, I'll get a moisture build up in here and I'll just get splatter on the model. So we just avoid that by taking that off. And then of course means I've got to be really careful with the uh, needle and not bang it. But you see there, it really hasn't changed the flow much. If anything, it's actually improved the flow I've got around and how I can work it. So it's quite uh, interesting. You'll see it in some of the build videos that I often will just take this off. And it's just much easier to work it that way. Simple. So dual action airbrush, I can change the airflow, I can change the paint flow uh, as I go to what I want and that is really uh, as simple as it gets so if you've got any questions share it out say hello uh, we'll see if we get some chat going so you're not listening to me drone on the entire time and uh, let's have a look at this so underside it's the same I've done a bit of light blocking around there as well just to make sure that uh, I don't get the uh, backlit effect of the plastic when we paint it, after we've painted it rather, and uh, kept it fairly simple on most of the most of the kit. Thank you for the like, whoever that was. Uh, now, some of you may have seen my Facebook post where the last live stream I lost 10 subscribers. Let's try not to do that today. <laughs> See how we go. It'd be nice to uh, try and hold on to a few of you. And uh, yeah, let me know what you want to see in future ones or in this one. Uh, we'll just change things going forward. I plan to do some build videos, plan to do some uh, painting instructional videos, etc, etc. That's really what people want to see. I'm a bit, bit heavy there. So I've just left this grey, the natural grey of the kit. You can uh, obviously go with a white over it if you want to increase that that effect so do the uh, shaded painting and then do highlights with a, uh, a white or lighter color and uh, just to help bring out that effect a little bit but I really want it to look splotchy I want it to look uneven because uh, we are going to have a very dirty knocked around couple of bird of praise I'm thinking so these are obviously for the premium subscriber giveaways that we're doing these and that's you can get either the kit of this or you can choose one of the two um, built models instead if you prefer so it's up to the premium subscribers uh, and I have a video on that too so you can check that out on my channel if you're interested in doing it or ask any questions if, if you want to now Simple. Simple. Right. Very slowly. Trying to keep a decent distance from the from the object. I don't really want to crowd it and avoid it. Um, it's just a bit easier to control. I can work with this pressure setting. I'm at about 20 psi. Uh, but the airflow is reduced because it's really just what I'm pushing down on. So I'm changing it as I go. And I might have a little bit of a uh, blockage in there. That's usually uh, how you get the bubbles. That's a bit of a shame. I could have sworn I cleaned it before I did this video, but that's all right. 
No one's perfect. Now I can work it right up to the surface if I want. But it's much easier to do uh, over spraying if you go too close, things like that. So it's a lot harder to work it this distance. And I, you know, see a few modelers sort of going right up to it uh, on really low pressure. Yeah, it's not really all that necessary. I mean, see if you prefer it, fine, but not a huge deal. So we're getting there already. You can see that's a sort of a model effect which is what we're after. And it is going to look very nice, hopefully, on the rest of the model. So if you're watching, shout out, let us know where you're from. Uh, I've tried to make this a, a viewer friendly time for everybody. So uh, viewers in Australia would be watching early morning Sunday and uh, viewers in the US, it should be uh, uh, sort of 9-ish, 10-ish uh, on a Saturday night. So let me know how that works for you. Or doesn't. Loving that so far, nice and easy. I'm going to try and make this a uh, weekly thing, but uh, of course, if people don't like it, then I won't. So... Let me know your thoughts. coming along nicely but how simple is that really it's I mean that's a nice model effect we're not really doing anything too uh, complex and we've got a lot of other stuff that we can do uh, with the tones and the surface of the kit and this is just the first stage so these models should look lovely let's hope when they're done Getting there, getting there. Hmm, apparently I didn't have chat available, so that's now fixed. Sorry about that. If anyone has any questions about airbrushing, happy to help if I can. So I'm certainly not an expert. But uh, happy to answer any questions you might have. Oh, what do you reckon? I reckon that's coming up all right so far. Looking good. I've had some people ask me why I don't use the lid on the paint pot and it's really because 
It's only half full, for starters. And I really don't go all that overboard with my movements of the airbrush, so it's not really going to uh, spill out. Of course, now that I've said that, I'll probably drop a great big wad of paint right on the surface of the model. So that'll be Murphy's Law. Looking good. And I'd just like to apologise. That's 15 minutes of me rambling already, you poor buggers. Fair bit of air pressure there, but I'm not using all that much paint. The paint's coming out rather slowly. Applied it a little bit heavily on the backside there, and we'll just wait for that to dry, and we'll come back and touch that up a bit. Mm. So it's got a little bit of splatter. And it's probably just because paint's building up around the tip of the brush here, so I'm just going to give that a squirt. It could also be because there's inconsistencies with the paint, being an older paint, I may not have mixed it enough. Yeah, I think it's working all right. It's looking alright. Looking pretty good. You'll notice even on small areas, I just keep moving the airbrush around, keep making circles. I don't let it sit in one place if I can avoid it. And uh, that really helps get a much nicer coat. You don't get the heavy spots where you've you know, over applied um, paint just by sitting in the one area. Of course it doesn't always work that way, but that's the theory anyway. Different angle for that. There are plenty of fit issues when you're building this kit. It is an older kit. And um, AMT has never really been renowned for its uh, fit quality on the, on the models it makes. Uh, there's a round two version of this one now, which I believe is pretty much the same. It's just got landing gear, if you want landing gear. And other than that, it looks pretty similar to me. I, mean, I might be wrong. Feel free to correct me if I am. Now these are going to be a different colour. They're not going to be green. So these are the weapon systems on the Bird of Prey. But I'm going to spray them green anyway. And that's just going to give us a base coat for when we work. So we're just basically using that as a primer really. Um, just getting all the little areas. And you can see I'm not being really careful about how I apply it. I'm just laying down some colour. I 
That'll make it a bit easier later when we come to airbrush the rest of it because it's not going to be uh, as stark. So if I've worked a green up to here and then I go to a black, um, if I don't apply it properly, it'll blend a bit easier in with the other colour. It's not going to just have a, like a really definable divide. Um, just gives you a nice... Nice little look. And you do the same thing with German armor when you do it. So if you're looking at like a three-tone scheme, or even if it's down two-tone scheme, uh, like a sand yellow or something like that, I always make sure. I mean, you see some modelers, they'll paint out the yellow bit first, then they'll paint out the brown bit, and they'll paint out the um, green bit, and they're really careful about where they put it. Oh, it's just base coat it in yellow. A, it's easier. Um, gives you a good surface to work on and you get that same sort of effect when it comes to painting later you don't get those divides between the, the paint colors so yeah, that's pretty well done we'll obviously change that later now ideally i'd like to be um having these on some sort of a stand so i'm not banging the model into the desk and possibly scratching the paint but I've got to have the camera very close to do the live feeds and it's just not enough room to squeeze that in so I'll just have to uh, suck it up and deal with it easy enough done My poor little compressor's working over time. I'm gonna make sure it's not overheating because I've got a fan running over it just to make sure I don't uh, cook it. But no, it's good. Really, I think the uh, capacity of the compressor that I'm using is not really made to do long sprays like this but if you look after it it's fine I've had this one for a couple of years now now I'm going to do the red under the side here a little bit later on but uh, I'm going to get a lot of green painted on there so I'm going to continue on that first because so I've got a fair bit of paint mixed up and I've got four wings to do so I'm just going to push them out of the way if we can. Yeah. If you notice any flow issues, mm -hmm. just clear it. Make sure you uh, don't do that on the model. So, that, so it's sort of slowed there for a minute. Kept going again. And that's not air pressure, that'll be the paint flow. Might be a bit of debris in there. Overspray. So I did that a bit too heavily there. It's too busy watching the uh, people jump in and out of the live chat and not paying attention to what I was doing. So we're just going to leave that. Uh, we shouldn't really need to do anything to that. It's only minor. It's not really heavy. It's not like there's been a a tide of paint around where I've gone uh, and we'll continue on and just let that dry probably the worst thing you can do is once you've noticed a mistake is try to fix it because you're just adding to the problem Oh, done it again. Britney Spears. I think trying to move too quickly. 
Let's slow it down a bit. need to uh, change out this paint because it's uh, see it's messing with me I'm doing all right and then I'm not doing all right I'm keep going just making sure I haven't got any build up on the end of it And if you're going to apply a clear coat to this, which we're going to have to, um, you want to be really careful if you're using a lacquer base, or even, I mean, it doesn't really matter what clear coat you're using, but lacquer base is probably a bit worse. Um, and that's because the paint is so thin on the surface that the clear coat might um, interact with it too much for lack of a better term and uh, wreck your paint job so especially if you're using a lacquer paint where it's uh, fairly thick you can have that problem i want to make sure i get that line in there spray it in green because that is going to be obviously in the red so we'll make sure we come right up to the red area too bad is it getting there now this part's a bit funny because it's all the raised detail and trying to get the paint into those grooves is a bit of a pain in the in the back side but we'll uh, give the squirt really all you can do is come at it from different angles Try to get the best coverage you can and later on yeah it's looking all right there's a little bit of gray in there still but later on um, i'll hit it again and then when we do the later steps in the painting i'll put the wash in there so that'll help um, blend out the, the lightly painted areas light on that side. It's alright, these things happen.
Das ist das und ohne Über. Feuchtes Sicht, nein, das ist. Das okay. That's okay, we can do with that. I don't promise I won't do any more accents. Right. Obviously, I'd love to play some music or something, but chances are I'd get a uh, copyright strike, so I'm not going to play around with that. Um, ever since the change in legislation, it's really been getting quite uh, tyrannical, should we say, YouTube has been. Uh, uh, you know, I'll do five videos that are exactly the same and they'll monetize four of them and then the fifth one they won't go. They no, can't monetize that. And, and you argue with them and then all of a sudden they go, oh, it's monetized again. It's just a pain in the backside. I don't know whether it's their algorithms or what, but it's uh, very annoying. Uh, just avoid any complications if we can. Now you can see I've rubbed off paint off there. And that's because I haven't been using a stand to paint these on. And it's dragged across the desk. Oop. That wasn't good, was it? It's dragged across the desk and taking the paint off there. Uh, just give that a hit. And that's the problem. So the rest of these, uh, once I'm done with the video, I will paint them on stands and then paint one side at a time. Well, I'd probably just put it on the stand there, couldn't I? Get it all done at once. It's easy enough done. Oh, did it again. Performing for an audience of two high stress stuff. <laughs> Thank you for dropping by, by the way. Feel free to shout out and let us know where you're from. Too bad. I like that. What do you reckon? <clears throat> Coming along. So slowly but surely it is coming together. Now, this part here, I'm just going to paint in. And this is a good time to show you uh, the, the baffles. Hey, g'day, Tim, from India, Indiana, rather. <laughs> g'day, mate. What's the time there, buddy? <laughs> g'day, Vasily. Thanks for joining us. All right, so these are the baffles that you might have seen on my Facebook or Instagram. Now, uh, for those of you that don't know, these were painted in a like a gun metal. Uh, I then used Vallejo chipping varnish over the top of it, did the three coats of that, and uh, then used a red-brown. And uh, Desert Stark Yellow or Desert Sand from Temia, just to add some uh, weathering to it. And these will be attached later. And I wanted to paint them while they were off. And 9.30, perfect. That's all right. That's the sort of the time frame I was shooting for, mate. So that's uh, that's that's good. Uh, and yeah, but you can see where that's going to pair up. So I really don't need to do too much. But because it's got the grooves, I'll bring it back into about here just to make sure that there's nothing showing. Uh, it's the last thing you want to do to go to all that trouble. And then... Finish off all your painting and then have to uh, assemble and 
have it mucked up. Hello from California. G'day, mate. How you going, Joseph? Thanks for joining us, everyone. We've got about 24 minutes left of this live feed. Keep it going so you can see. I'm trying to keep it all modeled, even though you're not going to see most of it. Um, what you can see, I really want it to blend with the rest. So we've gone a bit heavy there, but you get the idea. And I'm going to do it around the front edge. Just to make sure as well. Not too bad. Not too bad. Oops, almost put my thumb in it. And let's just get this part here. So it'll butt up against the baffle. And once again, you're probably not going to see it, but meh. Let's get it painted. Now we're taking bets, uh, as I said on the Facebook page, my last live fee cost me 10 subscribers. So do we want to take bets on uh, how many this one will cost me? <laughs> <laughs> ah, just joking. No. Let me know what you want to see though, if, if, you know, if this is the kind of thing you're after. What's the wire and tape? Ah, get out, Tim. Well, that is for the lighting. So in here, you can see there, I've used some really complicated toothpick masks. All right, so I've hollowed those out. I'm going to paint a little bit of silver in there, but I've hollowed those out and uh, the uh, LEDs or the SMDs, sorry, the two SMDs are actually hidden in there. So the wiring for those comes up through the top of the wing here and it'll be hidden behind the baffles when they go on and then joined to the main model and uh, for the positive and negative. So we've got the running lights coming out of there uh, whilst it's in action. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, pretty simple process, actually. The hard part's going to be um, soldering that to the other wires from the kit because they're fairly fiddly, and we'll see how we go with that. But uh, I'll get it done. It's just... Uh... Sorry, why did you lose subs? Edgy Joe? I have no idea, mate. <laughs> <laughs> my channel's really weird I go through and I think it's probably because of the giveaways that I do I go through periods where I get a heap of subs um, then I lose a heap of subs and I, <laughs> I get, get them coming and going I just yeah no idea no idea but I think uh, last yeah as I said the last uh, live feed I did was really quite funny because it was, tells me when people subscribe so it's going you know subscribe subscribe and I'm thinking oh yeah okay this is all right and then a couple of days later, I looked at the stats. <laughs> I had this massive downturn of people that unsubscribed from, unsubscribed from the channel when I did the uh, live feed. So, no idea. It might just be my personality, buddy. <laughs> Who knows? But, uh, yeah, no, I was thinking, look, as I said, it's probably people subscribe to see specific building videos or they subscribe to see, um, ah, too heavy there. I'll have to leave that for a minute. They subscribe to see, uh, you know, kit reviews, whatever, and then you do a live feed and they go, oh, no, I don't want that. And then there you go. Yeah, look, you know, that happens, mate. And I, look, I can't blame them too. If I see someone doing a giveaway, I'd be jumping in on it as well. Um, there was another channel I can, I can never remember the channel's name he, he's a, an American guy uh, great channel does all sorts of builds and reviews uh, what is his name he's only got about uh, I think it's just over 900 subscribers now um, and I'm going to remember after this and it's going to annoy the, the bugger out of me but uh, no, he did a giveaway recently and um it just went, like his channel just ex exploded a little bit. 
in terms of subscribers. And that's, you know, that's what happens. You'll get people joining. Um, and then hopefully you'll see, you know, they'll look at uh, the uh, content and stay. Others will just join for the videos. What uh, equipment am I using? Well, mate, I use very expensive no brand um, equipment. So this is a it's badge delta. I'm pretty certain you can't get them anymore, but you can get similar things to them. So it's just a standard dual action airbrush. Uh, very simple. Uh, in the beginning of the video, I took the protective cover off. This I find I get a bit of a paint flow than uh, if I do that. And so you can see the needle there works beautifully. You just got to be careful not to damage the needle. Uh, easy to disassemble, easy to clean. And as I said, dual action. So I've got um, airflow by pushing down and I've got the paint flow by moving back. And it just depends you know, how far you move back as to how much paint comes out. Now, uh, yeah, so it's pretty simple. Uh, I'll just wipe that off. Hang on a second. Yeah, pretty simple and easy. The compressor, once again, is just a little uh, compressor. I think it's one fifth horsepower. So it's uh, not very powerful at all and has a two or three liter a tank attached to it. And that's just to stop the compressor from working. So you can hear it now it's off. Uh, you'll hear it kick in when I start spraying again. Um, but the on off is, is uh, what saves the compressor. Oh, you mean the camera? Sorry, buddy. Uh, well, the camera is just my Galaxy Note 9. I think Note 9, got a Note 9, Note, yes, Note 9. I think Note 10 came out shortly after I purchased this, of course. So it's a Note 9. Uh, I love it, actually. It is really, really good. I use it for all my videos. And I've just got it attached to a, um, of all things, a microphone stand. So I've got an, an arm, like a telescopic arm that I can move around and adjust the height and everything. And um, that was for a, a microphone I was trying to use which I've give, since given up on. And uh, yeah, it works a treat. Works a treat. Yeah, see that, Vasily? That's probably why I lose subscribers, mate. <laughs> all right, that's looking all right. I'm quite happy with that. Once again, Let's just get our little baffle out. Now, this is reversed, I believe. No, no, hang on, that's the right way. No, it's not. That's reversed. So that the curve would be on the inside here. Uh, not at the back where you see it there, but that's all right. Doesn't matter. Let's have a look. That looks pretty good to me. So bearing in mind, this is still got to get clear coated and have washes and everything applied to it. That's just as you see it. But the, um, yeah, that's just the first coat on this one as well. And now we're going to get in to the grooves in here. So last thing I want to do is to be able to see bare plastic in between the joins. Now I've seen a lot of modelers actually build up an area in there to uh, hide those details. I don't really think I'm going to need to. Um, you certainly can if you want to, but I sort of looked at it and went, no, it should be right without it. And you see the black line in there, that's from the light blocking inside on the inside of the uh, wings. So when I do the build video, you'll see that. I do that on the inside of the wings just to cut down any uh, glow. Uh, that we may get from having the SMDs in there. Once that's closed up, or once that's installed, you're not going to see it. We'll probably come back and just hit that again a bit later just to uh, cover that. And uh, there we go. And I'll show you, before we start on the next one, I will show you the uh, wire spaghetti that is the main body. So, here is, and that's as far as I can zoom out at the moment, here is the main body of the bird of prey. 
So you can see I've taken out the windows uh, on all the sections here. Now, interestingly, I couldn't find one online. I'm sure there is one, but I couldn't find one online where they had people had lit up this top section. And that's because the light blocking there is really quite tricky. So there are LEDs in behind there, or there's one in behind this section here, and I've built up a fake uh, backing to it. And that'll sit between the ship and the baffle. And I'll show you what I mean. One second. Da, 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 da. All right, so remember before we we're talking about the curvature on the baffles? So I'll sit like that. So it doesn't need to be pretty in there, but it does need to stop the light from coming through. And that's uh, exactly what we've done. So we did the uh, light blocking on this one last time. And you can see I've got little uh, fiber optics coming out there for the strobes. So I've got two strobes. I've got one on the top and I've got one under the nose at the bottom. And most of the LEDs are housed in here. So I've got uh, two or three in the nose. I've got uh, one, two, three, four in here for the lighting. Five is the fifth one for the strobe. And then on the back, there we go. I've got three, it's because it's so close to the camera, it's not focusing, sorry. But I've got three uh, strobes in there, well, not strobes in there, three flashes in there. So two yellows and a red. And that's where the engine section is going to be. Now the wiring at the top here, that's to connect the wings, of course. And the, the uh, stand, I'm going to have it on. I've got two wire, two sets of wires for the power supplies. So one is a three volt and the other is a six volt. So I needed to, uh, off the top of my head, I'm pretty certain that's correct. So I needed to have the two power supplies for those. Just to make sure I'm running them properly. But yeah, coming along, this would be uh, a good job to paint. I'm probably not going to paint this live because these wires are just going to flop around everywhere and it's going to be a bit of a pain. So I'll, uh, might just leave that as it is and leave that for the build video. Tim, where do you get your lights? Uh, various sources, mate, but mostly from eBay. You know, in in Australia, I find it really difficult to find anyone who supplies uh, LEDs to a reasonable quality. There's JCAR, of course, down here, but most of them I get off eBay. Yeah, it's not not too small, mate. Uh, it is uh, quite a sizable little kit. Well, not so little kit, but uh, yeah, most of them I get off eBay. Uh, the SMDs in here definitely off ebay i can't get them anywhere else so uh literally i bought those pre-wired of course because that's very very fine wiring and i'm certainly going to go insane if i try to wire up the the back of those smds uh, if i remember i'll get one out for the next video and show you but definitely you'll see them on the build video of this uh and i get the leds the same so pre-wired uh usually with uh, resistors already attached um, and I order them just through eBay. I find there's heaps of sellers on there. Uh, I typically try to order off sellers that, you know, I've got decent history. Um, but I can get, and this is a ridiculous thing. I mean, I can get a hundred pre wide LEDs from China for a tenth of the cost that I can get just the equipment to do it here. Uh, so sort of looking at, you know, oh, okay, I'll wire them myself, but I'll go out and I'll buy the LEDs, I'll buy the wire, I'll buy the resistors, buy, um, you know, excluding all the, the soldering jazz for it. Um, and it's already cost me a lot more than uh, what it would have normally. So, yeah, I would just it's just one of those things. Uh, I always keep an eye out. Um, especially for flashing flashing LEDs, they're a bit harder to, to come by. So um, I keep an eye out for those and I'll order them in bulk because I like to do, I want to do a lot of um, lit models. So I'll order you know, batches of them at a time. And uh, same with the fiber optics. The AliExpress, you get mine. Yep. Yeah. yeah, AliExpress. Um, I actually haven't, I have never ordered off AliExpress. Um, no particular reason. I just haven't. I just found eventually I'll get whatever I need off eBay. Some forums sometimes off Facebook. Um, you'll see someone selling something that's interesting. 
and useful. But uh, yeah, go from there. wherever you get it from, what's really, you know, whatever your preference is. I'm sure you could probably find some on Amazon as well. But uh, yeah, for Australian suppliers, no. If I find one that's in Australia, who's selling them as I want, so the pre-wired sets, um, even if they're selling for a bit more, I'll try and buy from them. But very rarely do you see them. And usually what all they're doing is, is they've bought the same product from China and they're just selling it with a markup. And you sort of look and go, well, okay, so it's costing me more to buy the product, it's costing me more to have it shipped to me. Um, where's the benefit? But I suppose it's not on a slow boat from China, right? So that's probably the, uh, the biggest thing. But I find um, fiber optic cable, fiber, the fiber optic stuff is really hard to come by in the sizes that I want. So 0.25 millimeter is what I like to use with um, my star destroyers and things like that. And I've got probably about oh, 50 meters of it there at the moment. And uh, I've been looking around for the last couple of months trying to find a seller. And the only one I found was in the UK. And uh, essentially he was just reselling what he bought from China. And uh, yeah, with a really nice markup on it. So it was just too expensive. But you see people doing that. Can't blame them. Yeah, seventy five percent more here too. Yeah, yeah, not surprised, mate. It's it's um, you know, okay, cost of living's higher, much higher, expenses, all that sort of jazz, um, and the taxation. I mean, not to not to bore everyone with the tax story, but I think that's what kills it, really. Um, Plus two, I mean, the postage postage from the UK, when I pay from postage from the UK, it's actually quite reasonable, um, considering it's coming from the other side of the planet. But when you ship stuff from here, it is ridiculous how much they uh, want to charge. Last model I sent, I won't tell you how much it was, but I said to them, okay, so on the flight, is it going to get an in-flight in meal? Um, you know, what complimentary drinks does it get? La 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 la, and they're just sitting in like, oh, you're very funny. Oh, well, hang on, it's costing me almost as much as a ticket to fly there myself. Pretty much get on the plane myself and hand deliver the damn thing. Uh, modern world, huh? Yeah, so I don't think I'm going to use this paint again. It's just too old, and you can see I'm just having a lot of little flow problems with it. So I will ditch it and stay with the same brand, same paint type. Um, so it's just a Tamiya XF67 Nano Green, and that's the old school one. So I will uh, just throw that bottle out and uh, start off with a new one to find. I mean, that's been there for a long mm -hmm. time, so that's it. Mm, so we've got about five minutes left, guys and girls. If you want to shoot out any other questions, just let us know. Or what you'd like to see in the next video as well. Let us know that. Try and accommodate you. See... <clears throat> I'll have to give the airbrush a good clean after this. Just stops. Yeah, I shouldn't have used this paint. That's alright. <clears throat> that happens. Such is life. Yeah, just going back to the LEDs, the LEDs and the SMDs. I was pretty happy when I um, found the pre-wired SMDs. They were really cheap. Yeah, mate, this is the Klingon Bird of Prey that we're working on for the channel. 
Um, so uh, we're building two of them and uh, just working on the paint job for this. I most of my questions on the channel seem to be airbrush related. So I thought we'll do a live little airbrush session uh, just so you can see what I'm doing. And I only use cheap equipment anyway. So it's not like I'm going to sit here and go, oh, well, I have a $400 airbrush and, you know, $1,500 this, whatever. No. I'll just use the cheap stuff. Yeah, so this is the Klingon Beta Pro. We're just laying down the color. Thanks, mate. Me too. I'm... Um... I'm chomping at the bit to get these done. I've got a lot of commissions on at the moment and I'm trying to um, squeeze anything together. So uh, just to show you, if you've only just joined us, mate, that's the uh, the first wing we've pretty much sprayed. Got to do the leading edge again and uh, a few other bits and pieces. But yeah, no, looking good. Looking good. And they, I mean, I honestly think it was one of the, really one of the better um amt kits yes you had fish issues, fish issues yes you had dimensional issues all that sort of jazz but um it's still an awesome looking kit when you put it together and a great looking film model so you can see it's just playing up on me now and it won't be the thinning it's just the paint uh, we'll get rid of that. There's still plenty in there, but it's... And I'm blowing back air bubbles as well, which means there's probably a small blockage in there, which wouldn't surprise me. And that's from the old paint. That'll be a, like a bit of dried paint or something that's moved down, even though I didn't pour it from the bottle. So uh, when I get them out, I always get a bit of straw and uh, put that in there, suction it out, and then drop it into the paint pot just to make sure that or drop it into the mixing pot just to make sure that I don't cut down the amount of debris and stuff that I get out of there, but I've obviously managed to pull some over. And that happens. Nobody's perfect. That's coming along. So just to reiterate, these are the premium subscriber models for the channel. So we've got the normal subscriber giveaways, and we've got the premium subscriber giveaways. The premium subscriber giveaways have the choice of the model that's being built. So they can choose the build model or they can choose the kit that corresponds to that model uh, being built. And that's $11 US for one year to join and it's a draw at the end of the year. So even if you don't want to join, Today, you can wait until the end of the year and see what kits have been built and um, then decide, oh, well, yeah, I might have a crack at that one there. So, and I, you know what? I just really like doing giveaways. So I love it, to be honest. It, it's one of my favorite things about the YouTube channel. So you might see I go a bit quiet every now and then, but we'll do the giveaways. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I, can't, I can't see them out there with the chamois and sponges either, mate. <laughs> so, um, we're certainly going to uh, give this model plenty of, of texture as we go. So, just laying it on a bit thick here just to get in those recesses there. And uh, now... The wiring too, you see I've just glued that down to, well not glued it down, taped it down with a bit of Tamiya tape just to protect it and uh, stop it from moving so I don't scratch the paint job or end up with shadows or anything like that. But also uh, probably most importantly is to cover up the uh, leads so where I've got to solder the other wiring to it and uh, I want to make sure I get a clean, clean soldering join there and that wire for the SMDs in the front of the wing here is just so thin uh, that stripping it to get at it to solder it again is just a pain in the backside. Uh, 
not impossible. You can't burn it back or anything like that because the, the filament in there is so thin it just disappears as well. So, yeah, I'll just leave it. Klingons in their pants on the bird. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <Yeah. laughs> so there we go, guys. All right, so I'm going to call it oh, a couple more minutes. Uh, thank you to everyone who has joined us. And uh, if you have any final questions, let us know. And I'm just going to finish off this part here, and I think we're going to call it a day. I hope this time is suiting everyone a bit better. Um, so I'm, I've got viewers, obviously, from all around the world, and I'm trying to keep as many of you happy as possible. Um, there's obviously lots of different time zones, even in the same country, there's lots of different time zones. So hopefully this time suits everybody. Uh, it's early morning in Australia and it should be evening in most places in the US. So let's hope it's good. Thank you, Kilo. You have a good day too, mate. Thank you for joining. Uh, I really appreciate it, everyone. Thank you, everybody who's jumped on. Um, yeah, no, it means a lot to me, actually. So yeah please feel free to leave any feedback about what what you like what you don't like what you want to see what you don't want to see and um you know you can always catch me on the facebook page i'm going to update uh another uh, i've put an update for another video next week and i'm going to try and do it around about the same time so i've noticed as we get to the end of this stream we're getting a lot more people so i might take it back by an hour uh, uh and just see how that goes so uh it'll be about what about 10 uh in washington 10 p.m uh in washington if i do that uh and closer to about noon in australia so we'll give that a crack next weekend and see how we go so we'll do that on a sunday in australia and uh i'm a night owl so I feel so <laughs> adios mate you take care buddy and uh yeah, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, if you like it, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, yeah, thumbs down. Let us know what you want to see, what you don't want to see, what you did like, what you don't like. Um, you know, if you've got strong opinions either way, please let me know. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, stay tuned because we're going to have the build video of this coming up ASAP. So I'm really going to knuckle down. I've got this one to do. Thank you for the likes, whoever just did that. I've got this one to do and uh, the other one to do as well. Cheers, buddy. Take care, Vasily. And, uh, yeah, sort of. So we've got heaps coming up. Thanks again for joining us, and uh, we will see you very, very soon.